Hello everyone. I just finished a talk at login um, in Lithuania and uh, and I, I prepared this topic called Connecting Worlds with Art and NFTs and I'd like to share with you. So hope you guys uh, can benefit from this. So my talk will be in four parts. First, my accidental journey into the world of NFTs. What makes NFTs the game changers? how to find NFT gems, and how you can get started on your NFT journey. I will also be giving away a free NFT at the end of my talk, so stay tuned. But first, I want to talk to you about immortality and our quest to live forever. As artists, we have a superpower. We can leave our legacies through our poems, our music, and our art for future generations to enjoy. People may still be talking about us and our art long after we are gone. This innate human desire for immortality has always been a huge part of our conversation with God. Throughout history, humans have used art to connect with the spiritual world. Our idea of who God is and how Deities above the clouds toyed with us humans have been depicted in drawings, statues, poems, literature, and music. Nowadays, we have different clouds and different tech gods influencing our lives. Art was the key that opened the doors to the unseen and the imaginary. The Aborigines in Australia have a term called dreaming to describe their philosophy and reality. Our early ancestors understood that there was a world out there and they connected with it through storytelling, painting, song and dance. Values, traditions and laws were passed down in different manifestations of art. As trade opened up the world, cultures began to intermingle. Art was the bridge that connected different groups of people and their ways of life. To give you an example, here in my native Singapore, we have a mishmash of Malay, Chinese, Indian, and Eurasian cultures. And these different cultures all fuse together to create our own unique language, Singlish. I was telling my friends I'm presenting here today at Lock-In, and they all said, don't worry la, you'll be steady, pompipi, which means steady as a rock. In fact, in Singapore, we mixed and mesh so much that we created our own unique Peranakan culture when our ancestors had interracial marriages between the different ethnic groups. You can see this in our influence, in our food, fashion, architecture, music, and art. In fact, the uniform of the iconic Singapore girl was inspired by the sarong kebaya of the Peranakan women. Growing up in this melting pot of cultures, you can imagine why I often wondered who I was and what my place in the world was. The one thing I didn't know though was music. I was truly lucky to study music right up to university and I became fascinated with musical theatre. I wanted to make my mark in music, but to do that, I know that I need to know the, mu the money side of the business. Good thing I married a man who was expert in funding and technology. Thank you, Raymond. In 2018, when he published his book on blockchain, it had a profound in impact on me. I was thinking, if Raymond thinks this is the future, then I better check it out. I realized how open source could be the next big thing for artists. In 2018, using open source, I got together a group of creators, musicians, actors, and theater lovers, and we came up with a 30-minute Creative Commons musical from scratch in 26 days. This just confirmed my belief that open source is incredibly powerful when applied in the creative arts, which brings us right up to 2021. The year when the technology in NFTs finally became mature enough to go mainstream, resulting in a sudden surge of interest in this field, I saw an awakening in the creative industry. This incredible power, this potential to put the artists right back in the driver's seats of their own careers. And I decided to make it my personal mission 
to popularize NFTs, and so here I am today. So why are NFTs the game changers for artists? Today, we probably take for granted that we could publish a book, make a video, and be awarded royalties. But it never really was like that before 1710. It was only after the Statue of Anne, also known as Copyright Act of 1710, that authors gained some control over their financial future. They became entitled to royalties and legal protection for their intellectual property. It was momentous because, suddenly, the power to earn passive income didn't just belong to the royals and the aristocrats. Talent could now be rewarded regardless of your status in society. The Copyright Act had a huge impact on the civilized world. With creative, scientific and engineering works protected by the law, creators could finally secure their own financial future. For the next 300 years, various versions of the Copyright Act governed our modern world. Until 31st October 2008, a ghost by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto wrote the Bitcoin white paper that shook the foundations of this ownership structure. This white paper kick-started a technology where ownership could be recorded and confirmed via blockchain without going through a third party. Now, with blockchain and smart contracts, artists can get their rewards immediately and more importantly, without fail. No more waiting for your publisher to send you your royalty checks. With smart contracts, you can be paid immediately upon sale, and this greatly reduces the transactional friction needed to execute contracts. NFTs are the next big leap in the world of arts, entertainment, sports, gaming, and business. In fact, if you are in the intellectual property or ownership business, which essentially is 90% of the businesses today, you must really pay attention and use this technology to your advantage. A lot of businesses are going to be disrupted or even destroyed by this technology, but it is here to stay. So, if you can't beat them, join them. At this point, I think it's a good idea to share with you three of the most important questions I get about NFTs. First of all, what exactly is a non-fungible token or NFT? Well, fungible basically means replaceable. My $1 is replaceable with your $1. So it's fungible. But there's only one Mona Lisa painting in the world. So that is non-fungible or non-replaceable. NFTs are unique cryptocurrency tokens used to represent assets. These assets can be music, books, videos, photos, domain names, in-game purchases, and so on. However, NFTs can also represent physical assets such as real estate, antiques, passports, and wearables. In a nutshell, NFTs provide owners with proof of ownership. NFTs are empowered by smart contracts. So the next big question is, what is a smart contract? Remember earlier I talked about the Copyright Act? Well, a smart contract is actually more powerful than the copyright because the contract between a buyer and a seller is written directly in lines of computer codes. With traditional copyright, you still need to rely on the goodwill of the parties and the centralized government to execute the intent and promises of the Copyright Act. But when it comes to smart contracts, it is irreversible and immediately executable. So you don't have to go to court or waste money fighting on lawsuits because... A deal is a deal. It's a blockchain handshake that is unbreakable. Those lawyers in the room, please don't hate me when I tell you you may soon be out of a job. Accountants too. Smart contracts make calculating commissions and royalties redundant. And that is what makes them so powerful. And that's why NFTs are huge game changers. One more thing. Did you know that you can program a recurring percentage royalty on all subsequent sales of a piece of digital asset? 
Today, if I were to buy the statue of David by Michelangelo, Michelangelo would receive a huge percentage on the sale of the statue. But if I were to resell David again, Michelangelo in the old world would receive nothing because it would have been impossible to track. But today, if Michelangelo made an NFT of David, in this new world, he would receive royalties from all subsequent sales of his works via smart contracts, making him a very, very rich and happy man. This feature is another innovation that makes the growth of NFTs inevitable. Recently, I was asked by a reporter if there are any tips on how to spot a piece of valuable NFT art and how to forecast its increase in value. That's a very good question, because if you look at a lot of art in the NFT platforms, many of them are not what you would con consider traditional, traditionally to be masterpieces. Look at this. Guess how much this is worth? I mean, it's so pixelated, right? At its height, one of these punks is worth a whooping $7.5 million, and a few sold for more than a million dollars. Did you know that these crypto punks, some 10,000 pieces, were given away for free in 2017? So don't underestimate these free NFTs and stay tuned for our free NFT at the end. Now, before you go off and spend some good money on NFTs, I should probably warn you that it's likely the NFTs are a little bit overinflated in my opinion right now and they may cool off and normalize in the near future. Just look at how volatile Bitcoin is. A single tweet from Elon Musk can send the market crashing down or zooming up. Anyway, let me share with you some tips of what to look out for to determine what gives value to a piece of digital art. The first thing is timing. Timing is very important. CryptoPunks gained popularity as they were one of the first NFTs to be launched. They began around 2017, just when Bitcoin and blockchain started exploding into the scene. What I've observed is that usually a collection, the first in the category of a particular artist, curation or marketplace, can have a lot of hype, excitement and value. The first in the category is often worth a lot of money. Timing is also in the context if this works makes a mark on our digital history. It is imp interesting that our cultural landscape is suddenly filled with the start of important companies and you can see, see this when Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet for $2.9 million. I mean, that's not even art. Now, I would like to share with you my other formula for identifying valuable NFT artwork. I call this the holy trinity of NFT. Now, this trinity is made up of the artist, the buyer, the seller. And the seller may or may not be the artist. Let's use a real life example for now. Many of you will have heard the buzz about an NFT artwork that Christie's auction house sold for a shocking $69 million. Let's take a closer look. Well, this is the mother of all NFTs. Every day, the first 5,000 days by the artist Beeple, otherwise known as Mike Winkleman. Beeple lived his art every day for 13 long years without taking a single day off, including when he got married and when his children were born. Before October 2020, Beeple worked as a freelancer most of his life, despite having more than 2 million followers on his Instagram account the highest he ever sold his digital art was, guess how much? $100. But all that changed when he started turning his art into NFTs and the rest they say is history. So back to the holy trinity of NFTs. When you buy a piece of art, you're essentially buying the artists, who they are and what they stand for. Someone who has a good track record, how many followers they have, and if they have a chance of becoming more prolific and more influential. Of course, I believe that most important thing is that you must love the art you buy and have an emotional connection to it. Now, let's talk about the buyer of people's art. He is a crypto will by the pseudonym of Meta Coven from India, but who is currently living in my home country, Singapore. In his interviews, 
he revealed that he felt very aligned to people's works because he saw a parallel in their lives. He too was a nobody until 13 years ago, when the Bitcoin white paper was published. He was very drawn to the work ethic of people, churning out work after work and never giving up on his art and passion. He has decided to come out and show himself because he realizes that he is an important part of what creates value in this NFT. He says that if by him coming out, more people will accept blockchain and NFTs, then it would have been worth it. And the last member of the Trinity, the seller. The fact that Christie represented people and his art shows and, and his art shows that the traditional art world is recognizing this new way of presenting art that doesn't even exist in the physical realm. A 200-year-old institution representing world-renowned artists signal to the world that NFT art has arrived and it is here to stay. These three form the holy trinity of NFT art because their fate is irreversibly bound by the blockchain and anyone who buys this work buys the history and the provenance of that ownership. There are thousands of artists in the various NFT marketplaces selling all kinds of items. You can find, uh, you can find them doing excellent work. And if you like a piece of it, you can check out the various NFT sites such as Higgit Nook, Rarible, OpenSea, Nifty Gateway, and many more. Do chat with the artists and look for pieces that speak to you. This will be one way to support the movement. In a way, NFTs cannot be fully understood without considering the bigger metaverse, which as technology advances, is going to become our way of life. People are already creating avatars of themselves in the metaverse. They are buying up virtual lands which cost five, six, seven figures and spending good money on shoes, clothes and other virtual products that are more expensive than in real life. It won't be long before artificial intelligence comes along and machine learns the way we talk and think. And could it be that these avatars of ours in these virtual lands could just live forever? The future for the arts is bright because for the very first time in history, artists can achieve financial freedom because they can be paid transparently and immediately. For the first time in history, artists get to transcend borders without gatekeepers and, can, and connect with buyers all over the world. Before embarking on my NFT journey, I would never have imagined that I could meet, represent and work with artists all over the world from so many diverse backgrounds. The future is bright because in the words of Josh Friedman, who is a recovering cancer patient, NFTs allow him to live forever via his art. This is an artwork created from the x-ray of, of his vertebrae. One day he may pass on, but his art will live forever in the metaverse. Unlike physical works, which may be subjected to wear and tear and other physical constraints. Isn't this what every artist wants? And that's why we're so driven to create their art. The same drive that drove Mr. Winkleman every single day. Isn't this what every artist wants? A chance to live their eighty guy, to have real purpose, meaning and passion in their lives. A chance to reach immortality by doing meaningful work. To know that in a million years time, when the Mona Lisa is just a pile of dust, that their NFT art will still be there unchanged, preserved for eternity. With that in mind, I would like to help you kickstart your NFT journey. My team and I will be giving away 1,000 free NFTs so you can get cracking. Just go to the website cryptoiki.com slash free NFT to get started. Right now, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the window of opportunity for everybody here at the lock-in conference. At a rough guess, there are around 60,000 people who are actively involved in the NFT space. It's not a huge number, 
But what that means for all of you is that if you get into this space early, you can be a market leader in your own field and trailblaze its use and applications in your industry. Before I finish, I would like to thank the organizers at Lockin for giving me this time with you. I know you still have many questions, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll try to answer them. And now I would like to leave you with a challenge. At the beginning of this presentation, I talked about immortality. So here is my immortality challenge for you. When you are dead and gone, what do you want people to remember you for? And can you make that into an NFT? Thank you.